Hello, my fellow nerd knights, to episode 10 of our Hero Quest painting series. We're painting the Abomination. Nothing too crazy, but we're going to make it look super nice. A couple techniques I'm going to show you on this. First off, I'd like to thank all the YouTube members. You guys are awesome. I can't thank you enough for your support. And if you are a YouTube member, I'm going to give you preference of which minis you want to paint it first from all the games we got coming out. So hit me up. If you are not a subscriber and this is your first time at the channel, hit that subscribe button. We're building something here. We're building the Nerd Knights worldwide. Head over to our Instagram. We're going to be doing some giveaways here pretty quick. I'm working on several things. It's taking me a little bit more time. But without further ado, let's go. Now, if you've been watching this series, you know that there are some nice mold lines on all of these molded miniatures, which is fine. These are your standard run-of-the-mill miniatures. Uh, just take a nice little file and scrape some stuff off or a craft knife, whatever you got to use, and get those mold lines off. Once that's done, I'm using airbrush to prime my miniatures. And the reason I use an airbrush because it saves money. It's a little bit more expensive up front, but you save a ton of money. And we are using an airbrush for the first part of this and you'll see why to create those nice transitions. You don't necessarily need it, but it does help. All right, the first thing we're gonna do on this black canvas of miniature is gonna use some Carrick Stone inside of our airbrush. And we're going to spray this on the front portion, the underarms, and the back calves of our fishy McFishteen, as I am calling it while I'm painting this, but you can't hear that because I mute all the sound of when I'm talking. Um, we're going to do this very, very lightly. And if you don't have an airbrush, you don't necessarily need to do this. What you're going to have to do is take Carrick Stone and take some medium, some uh, acrylic medium you're gonna have to wet blend the two colors together so maybe skip forward and see the two colors that I use and you're just going to mix those together to kind of create a nice little gradient from the blue green to the light color tan that we are using Next, we're going to take some deck tan from Model Color. If you don't have this color, use some Ushabdi Bone or even some Screaming Skull. Just a little bit of lighter version of what we just used. And we are going to spray that on a majority of the tan areas we just got on. Again, if you're using a brush, just brush this on to a majority of the areas you just put this on. To start with our other skin areas, we're going to use some Stegadon Scale Green, and we're going to spray that on the rest of the miniature. Now, as we're following the card art, we noticed that the miniature is mostly blue with the tan, obviously, in very subtle areas on the chest area and under the arms, a little on the calves, but we're going to spray this all over. And again, if you're using a brush, put some acrylic medium in there and wet blend these two colors together. And as you can notice as you're watching this, I'm going very, very light on the airbrush. I am not trying to spray this thing all over. Very, very small little bits here and there. Not trying to overpower, and I'm trying to blend those two colors together. For the highlight on our Stegadon scale green, we're going to take some rust gray and we're going to really focus this on the parts that would hit the sun. And that's the good thing about having an airbrush is that you can create highlights with very easy gradient tones and make them look bright. And it doesn't take a brush and more time. This saves you so much time. And that's why I've been a big proponent of getting an airbrush. Now to create our wash, we're gonna take three parts of contrast medium to one part of Basilicanum Gray, which is a contrast paint, both from Citadel. And we're gonna wash this thing all over and let it dry. Thank you. 
Once we got a dry Fishy McFish stain, we're going to take some Rust Gray, the highlight we used for the airbrush, and we are going to start edge highlighting and picking out certain areas of our miniature. This is probably the most time consuming portion of this miniature. Take a nice brush, I'm using a size 10-0, very sharp edge brush, and we're going to take the edge of that and we're going to start scraping edges, creating highlights. This is going to take you some time per miniature, but once you're done with it, it's going to make that miniature look super nice. And just take the time and do it. As you can see, that rust gray really stands out and makes that miniature really pop and look fantastic, really. We're going to go back over our tan areas with the deck tan. If you don't have this, you use Ushabdi Bone or Screaming Skull. We're going to use whatever color you used. And we are going to put that onto certain areas of the abs and a little bit under the arms if you want to. Just create that nice bright areas in certain areas where it catches the eye. And we're using a little bit of this on the webbed portion of the feet. For the rest of Fishy McFishteen, we're going to be doing some rack card flesh on the teeth the nails on the hands and our toenails that are sticking out. For our loin cloth, we're going to be using some German gray. For the wooden portion of our spear, we're going to use some dryad bark. For our eyeballs, we're going to be using some white. And for all of our metal bits, which is the two parts on the spear and the one part onto the belt buckle, we're going to be using some normal lead belcher. And that's going to conclude the other base colors for Fishy McFixteen. For the teeth and the nails, we're going to be using some Agrax Earthshade. For all of our metal bits and our loincloth, we're going to be using some Nolan Oil. And the one-stop shop for those bright yellow eyes matching the card art, we're going to use some Lamenter's Yellow. 
Again, head over to our Instagram. We're going to be doing some giveaways. I got some stuff going on. I'm going to be giving away some free board games coming up, so go subscribe over there as well. After our washes are dry, we're going to be starting on our highlights, and we're going to go over with a reapplication on the teeth and the nails of Rackarth Flesh. Now, when you're doing the teeth, use a small brush. I'm using a size 10 0 brush, Rosemary & Co. If you're looking for any brushes, I do have a link in my description. And if you only want to do a single brush, you can use the coupon code. It does help the channel. And does help with future paintings so I'd appreciate that you guys are awesome if you do that I love all of you and we're just gonna go over those simple areas not the whole nail just about three-fourths of it to do the next set of highlight we're gonna use some Ushabdi bone and again you're not doing the entire fang you're not doing the entire tooth you're doing about half of it just to create that variant of color and for our final highlight on those teeth and those nails we're going to use some screaming skull and you're doing about one fourth of the teeth and of the nails just creating that variant of color We're also going to use some of the Screaming Skull on a little bit of the ab area. As you can see, some of those barnacles or whatever they are, and a portion of those gills are sticking out. I'm just doing a very light touch-up on those areas just to make it look a little brighter. To highlight up our metallic areas, we're going to do a little edge highlighting of Iron Breaker on our bottom and top of the spear and on the belt buckle of our Fishy McFishteen. And finally, we're gonna be doing some Abaddon Black around the base, because it's your favorite part. That means we're done. Nothing too crazy, and look how good it turned out. Took a little bit of time, a little bit of highlighting. The edge highlighting took a little while, but it looks fantastic. It's going to look even better on the table. So I just want to say thank you for watching. If you're not a subscriber, hit that subscribe button. We have so many games. I think I have almost 30 games in Kickstarter that I'm awaiting to arrive. I'm going to be doing this for years. Unless you guys tell me not to do it anymore, then I won't do it. But thank you for watching. I appreciate the support on the channel. Until next time, paint on.